Howie Dewey as Princess Diana or the People's Princess. I never enjoyed being a princess. I never got to choose what was right for me because others chose for me. Being a princess was never a happy time in my life, but neither was my childhood. When I was seven, my parents moved. We were divorced. My father, Earl Spencer, got custody of me and all of my siblings. As a child, I struggled being different. Divorce was very uncommon during the 1960s. When I was, when I was eight, my father sent me to boarding school an hour away from home. I only got to visit my family on weekends. I struggled in academics, but excelled, excelled in sports. And I most enjoyed community service. In the summer of 1979, I, when I turned 18, my parents bought me an apartment, or flat as it's known in London. For money, I babysat the children of my sisters and their friends. I love working with children. I was pleased when my sister connected me with a system teaching job at a local kindergarten. In July 1980, I was invited to a party at my friend Philip's house. I got to watch him and Prince Charles play polo. Uh, after the game, Charles and I talked for hours. After six months of dating, he proposed. The response from the public and press was very intense. They called my flat and followed me everywhere. After the engagement, I moved into the Buckingham Palace, where I saw how to talk to, talk to the public, she hustled servants, shake hands with people, and even had a wave to a crowd. Charles and I spent hardly any time together before the wedding. Finally, the big day had arrived, July 29, 1981. It was marked the wedding of the century, and they even made it a national holiday. I was eager for my honeymoon and to spend time with my new husband, but Charles seemed more interested in fishing than spending time with me. So I spent most of it eating ice cream, sleeping, and talking, and uh, visiting the servants' quarters. After the wedding, I thought people would be less interested in me, but it seemed everywhere I went, I was the center of attention. As princess, I knew it was my responsibility to produce an heir to the throne. In 1982, I gave birth to my first son, Luke. In, in 1984, I became pregnant again. Charles kept repeating that he wanted a girl. When I gave birth to my second son, Harry, the first words out of his mouth were, Oh God, it's a boy. I was devastated and angry. Something inside me closed off. I was devoted to my sons, but Charles and I spent less and less time together. Despite the pressures of my family marriage, I kept up my public appearances and took special interest in helping people less fortunate. In 1987, I agreed to open the first British hospital ward dedicated to AIDS patients. My willingness to touch people with AIDS changed the public's perception of this dread disease. I became involved in my charity work with sick and disabled AIDS patients, the homeless, and later campaigned clear landmines. In August of 1986, my divorce was official. I was pleased to have more freedom from the royal family, but was worried it would take over my boys' lives. A year later, I was in Paris with my boyfriend, Dodie. We were eating dinner at a restaurant at the hotel. But the press was so intense, we decided to escape from the back entrance. By the time the driver had pulled up, six cars and motorcycles of paparazzi were following us. We ran a red light to avoid them, but we lost control of the car and crashed. I died at approximately 4 a.m. on August 31st, 1997. More than 2.5 billion people watched my funeral on television. Life is a journey. Mine was a difficult one.